want to wish you all a very warm uh, welcome to DIFC's uh, Chemistry uh, Open Day. Um, I just want to get up my slides now for you. So I just want to make sure now that I am sharing the slideshow with you. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Dr. Lorraine and I am DIFC's chemistry teacher. And um, for the next 20 minutes, I'm going to be giving you a small demo lesson in chemistry. And I would also like to say a special hello and thank you to the students of DIFC who have taken part of their day to be here with me. I appreciate that. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. Hello. Hello. Thank you. You're very welcome. So when I was thinking about what to do today for the demo lesson, I started to think about what I really like. And I really love TV. I don't know about you guys, but I really love crime shows. And um, if any of you have ever watched a crime show like CSI, you'll see the detective hand the sample over to the chemist, who then will manipulate the sample, stick it in a machine and come out with an answer and solve the crime, which I think is wonderful. Now, we all know that uh, these types of shows are works of fiction, but there is a little bit of truth in what they do in the sense that they do look at compounds, they do separate them, they do identify them. And this separation and identification is based on looking at the compound's unique properties. Things like the compound's melting point, boiling point, maybe its color, polarity, how it reacts with certain reagents and so on. So, I decided to look at something that is on the IFY syllabus that reminds me of CSI, uh, and that is the mass spectrometer. And I want to use our 20 minutes to, to, to understand a little bit how the mass spectrometer works. Now you can see there a picture of the mass spectrometer. It's a massive machine, it's very expensive. And I have highlighted three parts. I've highlighted the electron gun, the magnet, and the curve. And I want you to keep in mind those three parts as we go through today's lesson. So the word mass spectrometer. Now imagine the word mass spectrometer came up in an exam and you hadn't studied for it. And you were asked to kind of guess what you think it might be about. Um, so I'm just gonna write down the word mass spectrometer on, on our whiteboard. Can you all see the whiteboard there? Yep. Yeah? yeah. Very good. Thanks, guys. So, uh, just trying to. Now we got it. So, we have the word mass spec. Drum letter. Okay. Uh, we, uh, we can't see any writing. Okay, don't worry. I will go back into the share there. You can't see that there? Yeah, now we can see it. Okay, thanks for letting me know. So you've got the word mass spectrometer, okay? So when you hear the word mass, what does it remind you of? Would anybody like to take... Weight. Weight, okay, yeah. In, in chemistry, when you hear the word mass, does it remind you of anything to do with, a, with an atom? Yeah, the relative atomic mass. Yeah, it's to do with relative atomic mass. Um, there's also mass number as well, isn't there? Uh, can anyone tell me what mass number means? Any ideas? Uh, proton number? Yeah, it's proto proton number, yeah. <laughs> How these things get forgotten, isn't that right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it is the number, it's the number of protons. Can anybody shout out there and give her a little bit of help? 
Yeah. Uh, the total number of yeah. and new friends. Well done. Okay, well done. So the mass is to do with the total number of protons and neutrons, okay? Now, the next part I want to look at is the meter part. And when I think of meter, I think of things like thermometer, uh, barometer. So based on those kinds of words, uh, David, what do you think the word meter at the end of things like thermometer, barometer might mean? Uh, a measure of something. Yeah, it would be. So it's a measure of something. It's something to do with um, measuring. It's a measuring device. Okay, uh, and that leaves us with spectro. Now, if you've never done mass spectrometry before, you would be forgi forgiven for not knowing what spectro means. Spectro is to do with spectrum, which is a scientific picture that is made uh, to show you the result of something that comes out of such a machine. So when we put all of that stuff together, and I'm just going to go back into my PowerPoint now again. Uh, you guys can see the PowerPoint again, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cheers. Thanks for letting me know. Uh, when you put all that stuff together, um, and thanks for your contributions on that, uh, you would say that the mass spectrometer is a device that's using masses uh, to, uh, in some way, to identify, maybe separate a compound and produce a thing that is a spectrum. So when I think of a, uh, of a sample that goes into a mass spectrometer, I imagine uh, a bag of marbles of different sizes. Um, and I imagine that this is the chemical sample made up of particles with different masses and they go into that machine and they get separated out and then a picture emerges and this picture has these lines which are called peaks and these peaks represent the different masses that made up the sample that tell the chemist look this is what the sample is made from okay now can you see this little picture, the little boy, the TV and the magnet? <laughs> so would anybody like to tell me what's happening here? Uh, the somewhat electrons, something being yeah. attracted by the magnet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very good, yeah. Um, who, who hasn't spoken? Kelly, you haven't spoken yet. What do you think uh, is happening here? Um... Maybe the electromagnetic wave was interrupted by the magnet. Yeah, yeah, that's very good, yeah. So there's some kind of interactivity going on between the charged particle and the magnet. And it's, an, it's enabling the boy to break the TV, obviously, but it's also enabling the charged particle to be moved around. Uh, it's a way of controlling the position of a charged particle. So the magnet can control the position of a charged particle. And the beauty of this is that you can charge a particle without changing its mass. Because mass number is to do with the protons and the neutrons, which are little particles inside the mass, uh, sorry, inside the atom, uh, which you've already told me. Um, but what charges up a particle is not the protons or the neutrons, it's the electrons. So you can charge up a particle, you can add electrons or you can take electrons away without changing the mass of the atom. So you can keep that mass the same and you can do your separation and your identification um, while charging that particle up. And that particle being charged up can now interact with the magnet. Whereas before, when it wasn't charged up, it wasn't interacting with the magnet. So we want to talk about now how the particle is charged up. And I'm going to switch back now to the whiteboard. Can you all see the whiteboard there now? Not yet. Oh, yeah, I can now. Yeah, very good. Thanks for that. So how do we charge up a particle? Um, so this is a very violent process and it involves a gun, okay? And it's an electron gun. So it's an electron gun. 
and that electron gone is going to shoot out little particles, okay? And you have your atom. And inside your atom is, is your protons and neutrons. That's your mass. Okay, that's going to be completely left alone. Now around the atom are these little electrons. Okay, so what's going to happen is the, the bullets that are coming out of the electron gun are going to shoot into the atom. This is the atom. And they are going to smash those electrons and send them out of the atom. So it's a terribly, uh, a terrible thing happens to the atom. It's a very violent reaction. And you're left with the same mass as before. Okay, that hasn't changed. But the difference is now that you have less electrons in there. So you started with an atom and now you have ended up making a positive, a positively charged particle. Without actually interfering with the mass of the uh, atom at all. So now you have made your particle uh, ready to interact with the magnet. Whereas before, it wasn't ready to interact with the magnet. Now, you should all be able to see my PowerPoint again. Yes. Uh, and you can yep. see my, my, little, my little gun hitting the, uh, the atom and then an electron popping off the atom, making a charged particle. Now, so let's recap. There were three parts that I wanted you to note today about the mass spectrometer. The first part was the electron gun. We've, we've done that now. We've seen what happens there. Uh, we've seen that you can charge up a particle by smashing like electron bullets into it. Um, and the other thing that we've looked at is the magnet. Uh, the magnet uh, takes up the particle and it's able to move the particle around. And the other part that I wanted you to keep an eye on today was the curve. And the, if you look at the machine, you'll see the machine is curved. And I want to look at why that is. So I have an analogy there. I'm looking at a road. I'm forgetting about whether we're driving on the right side or the left side of the road. I have a red star and a yellow star. I have a car and a truck. Now, which vehicle is going to go to the side where the red star is and which vehicle is going to go to the side where the yellow star is? Bucci, I'm going to give that one to you. The, the car is going to move the, um, to the parts of the red star. Okay. Tell me why. Why did you pick that? You're right, by the way, but tell me why. Because um, the truck is heavy. Yes. So it's to take the long turn. But the car is not happy, so it's not to take the shot. Absolutely. Yeah. Well done. So they're going to move around the bend according to their mass. The, the little particle that has the, 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 the lighter mass is going to move to the inside of the curve. And the particle with the heavier mass is going to move to the outside of the curve. So this is why you have a curve in this machine. It's to help put the particles in a certain position according to their mass. Now we'll check the schematic here. Oh, by the way, the car goes on the inside of the curve, the red star. The truck goes on the outside of the curve, the yellow star. So let's check this schematic. And you can see that we inject our sample in and then it goes to the electron gun, which is the smasher. It smashes up the, the atoms and charges them up. And then it moves to the magnet and some of the particles are too heavy. They go to the outside of the curve. Some of the particles are too light. They go to the inside of the curve. And then the particles that are just right will go all the way to the detector 
and then that detector is connected to your computer, which shows you your picture, your spectrum. And here's another schematic, kind of a little fancier kind of a one that shows you the same thing, where you have your sample entering in and then it gets heated up. We like to heat up our sample to turn everything into a gas. The machine is designed to uh, analyze the, the particles when they're in the gas form. So it doesn't matter if the sample starts as a solid or a liquid, uh, everything that goes in there ends up being a gas. And then the particles are smashed up with the electron beam source, the electron gun. They're accelerated along and then they go to the magnet and the magnet exists where the curve is. So the curve and the magnet work together to separate out the particles according to their masses and then they hit the detector and then after that they produce a result and now you have successfully separated out your particle according to the mass. Now I just want to show you a, a small part of a video uh, on this. So I have to, I'll just get out of here for a second. And I will bring up um, this window. So hopefully you guys can see this animation now, can you? Yeah. Yeah, yep. good stuff. So I'm not going to dwell on the start of the animation. I just want to bring it to maybe this point of the animation. All right. And I'm going to hit play now. It's super quiet. It, well, the, the volume now doesn't really matter. What I'll do is I'll do the voiceover. I'll tell you what's going on, okay? So actually, I'll, I'll mute it there. So you've got a picture of the machine. The sample is going in. The sample is going to be heated up. The sample is going to be hit, uh, is going to be hit by the electron gun. It's going to go through these little accelerator slots and then it's going to go through the magnet and then it's going to be divided up and you're going to see your spectrum. Okay. So I'll just hit play again. So you can see that the particles are uh, going in there, the little things in green and they're hit by the little particles that represent the uh, electron gun bullets. Then they're charged up and they go along the bend of the machine and depending on what weight they are, they go either on the inside of the bend or on the outside of the bend and they hit the detector and it gets turned into a pitcher. And that pitcher is the spectrum. So that gives you an idea of how that machine works. Is that okay with everyone? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I am going to just switch back now to my uh, PowerPoint. And I'm just going to go here to a little bit of homework. Okay. So can everybody see that slide there? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so column. <laughs> what does the mass spectrometer do? Uh, I'm going to say it separates out components of a sample according to their mass or their mass to charge ratio. Well done. Um, column, pass the question, pass the next question on to somebody there. I'd probably pass it on to David because I know he knows this stuff inside out. Okay, David, off you go. Oh, you can't draw it. Okay. What is the electron gun used for and how does it work? Off you go, David. 
um, is used to bombard the particle with electrons to make it positively charged. Okay. And why do we want to, to make the, the, the particles charged? <laughs> Think of the uh, picture of the boy with the TV. Also that it can be deflected by yeah. the electron by the negative charge plates. Yeah, and also by the remember what the boy had in his hands. The magnet. Yes. Well. Yeah, that's it. Uh, so, uh, David, pass on the next question to the next victim. Hmm. Sabrina. Okay, that's Sabrina. What is the magnet used for? How does it work? Um, the magnet is used to separate between the positive and the negative ions. Okay, all right. And um, so the, the sample goes in and it interacts with the charged particles. So well done for that. And Sabrina, pass on the, the next question to whoever you have there. Can I just pick anyone? Yeah, pick anyone. Um, Kelly. Okay, Kelly, why is the machine curved? Um, so that, like, when the particles are different shaped to heavier and lighter ions, the lighter ions will curve too much and the heavy ions will just, I don't know how to say that. Like, yeah, you're doing a good the, job. The, yeah. The the heavy ions will just slam into the wall. Yeah, that's exactly so, what they do. Yeah, so the just right ions will go to the detector. Exactly, that's it. So, well done. Uh, you, you, did, you all did a superb job today uh, with our chemistry lesson. Um, does anybody there, and I'm thinking in particular our guests, does anybody there have any questions for me? Uh, Column, just in terms of time, how am I doing? We're a little over, but it's not a big problem, I don't think. We're going to be handing over, I think, to Michelle and Dennis now. Okay, so probably uh, I'll, 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 I'll save the questions for later. Um, and thank you very much, everybody. Uh, well done to, to all of you. Um, and I'll pass over. So... Uh,